We greet you again this Tuesday night in the name that is above every name. We greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, for we know there is no name greater than the name of Jesus. Amen. And, and that name is sweet, sweet, so sweet I know. Amen. Blessings to you. We pray that your week has gotten off to a good start. Amen. And we are glad you're joining us here on tonight uh, as we enter into the study of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So if you don't mind, why don't you join me in a word of prayer uh, as, we, as, we, as we prepare for our lesson time here on tonight. Come on, let us pray. Uh, God, we thank you for blessing us with yet another opportunity to assemble uh, virtually uh, through, through technology to be able to commune one with the other and fellowship with each other as we study your holy and divine word. Uh, we thank you for your word, because your word indeed is a lamp unto our feet, and it is a light unto our path. And we know if your word, if we treasure it, we hide it in our hearts, it will prevent us from sinning against you. It will prevent us uh, from walking uh, out of step with you. We want to walk in step with you. We want to walk with you. We want to have harmony and fellowship with you. So we thank you for your word. Uh, that allows us to do that, helps us to walk in your ways. But also, we thank you for your word because it helps us to, uh, to, to know your will. We know it's through your word that you reveal yourself and reveal what you desire for our lives. And so, God, we're glad to know uh, that your word is alive, living, and well. And so we pray you will continue to order our steps. Uh, but we know the steps of the righteous are ordered by uh, you, our Lord. So we welcome the presence of your Holy Spirit. Uh, to be with us during this hour of study. Uh, we pray that your spirit as our ultimate guide will guide us into all truths, uh, but as our helper, help us to carry out these truths. We want to be like uh, wise builders who, 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 who Jesus said, a wise builder is one who does my word, is likened unto a man who builds his house on a sure foundation uh, so that when the rains and winds uh, and the waves blow upon it, uh, it'll be able to stand. So, God, we thank you for your word as our foundation upon which we can stand. We're even dealing with some um, stormy times even now. Uh, this pandemic period, still yet this period of unrest, uh, we know your word uh, is there to give us the stability that we need uh, in times like these. So now we thank you for the subject matter. We're dealing with love. And we thank you for this first um, set of lessons in this quarter dealing with family love. Bless families tonight, God. We pray that you will uh, bless families where there is disharmony. We ask that you will provide unity where that has been hurt. Uh, please give uh, healing. Uh, God, where there is distress, we ask for help. We know, God, that, you're, that, 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 that you are a lover of families. The, the building block of society is the family. And we know we face family challenges every now and then, but we know we can look to you uh, to help us uh, and, and, and to help us to build uh, better family relationships. So bless this lesson tonight. In Jesus' name, this day we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. God bless you. Glad you're here with us once again. Uh, again, we pray that, as I said in my prayer, we pray that these first set of lessons have been a blessing to you. Again, we're off and rolling into our uh, new quarter, which deals with the subject matter of love. All right? And so this first uh, set of lessons deals with family love, all right? And we've been looking at the narrative of Israel's patriarch by the name of Joseph, the one who was sent by God to Egypt to prepare uh, and to preserve life as your lesson I believe your lesson was stated on tonight. Uh, and so again, we're looking at it through Joseph, his, uh, what happened with him with his brothers uh, and how that set the stage. Uh, how God used that uh, in order to place him in a position that he might be a blessing not only to Egypt, but ultimately, according to the biblical narrative, as the one who, 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 who preserved uh, uh, the, the, the seed of Abraham during the period of famine. Amen. So again, uh, tonight we, 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 we move to, ver to chapter 45, uh, and we get to chapter 45. We we'll deal with our lesson for this particular week. So we're giving you an overview to tonight of, of, of your Sunday school lesson, which will be in uh, Genesis chapter 45. So your Sunday school lesson is entitled this week, Love Prevails Over All. All right? That's a blessing to know that love 
prevails over all. Love can prevail if you allow love to prevail. In spite of how deep the wound, how deep the hurt, love can prevail. All right? And so one of the things our families can know and learn that love can prevail. Um, prevail. All right. Love prevails over all. Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 8, and then verses 10 through 15. So your lesson comes from Genesis chapter 45, uh, verses 1 through 8, and then also verses 10 through 15. That is your out. That is your lesson. Love prevails over all. Genesis 45, 1 through 8, and verses 10 through 15. All right. Your Sunday school lesson is divided into two outlines. Outline number one, love reveals itself. All right, today's lesson is the great reveal. Last week you left off with Joseph uh, recognizing his brothers. That first encounter as the brothers left Canaan, came to Egypt to get grain because of the famine. Uh, jo Joseph encountered them. He recognized them, but they did not recognize Joseph. Now, some events transpire. We'll cover that tonight. That brings us back to this second encounter. Uh, of Joseph's brothers there in Egypt and is that this encounter, a part of this encounter, it culminates with love reveals itself. Joseph reveals himself to his brother. The great reveal, which is Genesis chapter number 45, verses 1 through 8. All right, Genesis 45, 1 through 8, love reveals itself. And then your second uh, outline, second and only outline, uh, second and final outline, is love prevails, all right? Genesis 45, 10 through 15. Love prevails, all right? Genesis 45, 10 through 15. In this portion of, the, of your narrative, of the lesson, uh, Joseph uh, brings his family uh, from, from, from Cana to Goshen, all right? The finest grazing land there in Egypt, all right? So that's your, that's, that's your, that's, that's your lesson uh, for, uh, for, for Saturday. I keep saying Sunday, but that's your Sunday school lesson for Saturday, all right? So, um, to it, let's read it. I'm going to read it from the NIV version uh, there in your Sunday school book, all right? And of course, your book has the King James, but it also has the NIV, all right? I'm going to read your lesson from the NIV. Uh, again, your first outline, again, your lesson entitled Love Prevails Overall, Genesis 45, 1 through 8, and then 10 through 15. Your first outline is entitled Love Reveals Itself, verses uh, 1 through 8. Here we go. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. And Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Verses 10 through 15 concludes it out, which is again entitled, Love Prevails. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and your grandchildren, your flocks and your herds and all you have, I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father all about the honor accorded to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. 
Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterwards, his brothers talked with him. All right. Wonderful, wonderful conclusion to a story uh, that, that, uh, uh, that features Joseph and his brothers. Again, love prevails over all Genesis 45, 1 through 8, and 10 through 15. All right. Uh, what we want to do tonight is, again, we want to set the context of your text. Uh, last week, uh, your lesson left off with, uh, with the brothers' first encounter there in Egypt in Genesis chapter 42. But several things happened between Genesis 42 and 45 that set the stage for the events that takes place in chapter 45, all right? So let's pick up where we left off last week with your Sunday school. Last week, all right, you remember, um, they, uh, because of the famine, they had to, um, Jacob uh, ordered his sons to go to Egypt by grain, okay? They make it to Egypt, uh, and they have to go, because they're out, because they're not part of uh, the nation of Egypt, because they're not part of Egypt, they had to go to Joseph, the actual governor of the land, to get permission to trade in the land, or permission to buy grain, all right? And so because of that, uh, they, they appeared before Joseph, uh, there is office, Joseph sees them, he recognized them, uh, and, uh, but he did not reveal himself to them. Matter of fact, the text says uh, that he spoke harshly to them. Make sure we understand that he did not speak harshly to them because uh, he was upset with them, but he spoke harshly to them as part of the ruse, all right? It was part of making sure they would return because remember, he says to them, you are surely spies, all right? So they're going to need to do everything that they can to prove that they're not spies. So all that was part of Joseph's setup. Okay, uh, to arrange the events as they, uh, as they would unfold. And particularly, it was part of the setup to ensure that he would see his brother Benjamin. Now, he's seen all of them, but he hasn't seen Benjamin because Benjamin was not with them. All right? And Benjamin is his, uh, is his brother through his mother Rachel. They were the only two uh, that, bore, uh, that was born uh, between the relationship between Joseph, Jacob and Rachel. Remember, Rachel was, was Jacob's first love, all right? So he had a special place in his heart for, for those boys, and particularly for Jacob, as it'll play out in today's lesson as well, because Jacob was the youngest boy, and he was born in, Joseph's, uh, in Jacob's old age, all right? So he has a special infinity for Benjamin, and particularly because he doesn't think Joseph is alive anymore as well. So it's great. you go through the encounter, right? And so uh, when it played out, Joseph says, uh, to prove that you're not spies, bring your younger brother back to me. And as the story played out, um, he sent them away, all right? But he held on to one son, Simeon, all right? And then finally he said, I'm going to send uh, all, all of you can go back, but I got to keep one of you to ensure that you come back with Benjamin. You come back with your youngest brother. And they still don't know who he is yet. Uh, and so uh, this is how it is playing itself out. So as, so as, as, so there in chapter 42, the lesson ended last week, I believe around about verse 25, I believe it was, um, is that um, they, he, he sent them back to Canaan. Uh, he filled their bags with all the grain they needed, right? And he stuffed their money that they used to buy grain. He had it placed back in their bags, all right? And that'll play itself, that, that plays into the narrative as well. And so, therefore, as they left, all right, and they, and they left Egypt, uh, and they rode so far, and then they camped out for the night, and one of the brothers opened up his sack and noticed that the money that he, has, that, that they, that he thought he had used to buy grain for him and his family, it had been placed back in his satchel, and the Bible says, and their hearts fail. Because now... Now, now it's a problem because it now looks like we've got to return back, number one, with our youngest brother, all right, because the man, the lord of the land, thinks we're spies. Not only that, he's going to think we're spies and thieves because how are we going to explain how this money got back in our bag? And they were saying, how, why is God doing this to us, all right? But it's, again, it's part of Joseph narrating the events, all right, for, for lead, that will lead to a reconciliation uh, with his brother. So they return back home. They tell their father what the deal is. Dad, look here. 
uh, this is what happened. The man spoke harshly to us. He thought we were spies. And he said the only way we could come back before his face uh, is that we have to bring Benjamin. Oh, by the way, he has kept Simeon. Jacob is hurt. He has now lost, it appears to him, two sons. And in order to get this one son back, he has to let Benjamin go with them to Egypt. All right? And, and as 42 closes out, Joseph, or Jacob, rejects the plan. Jacob has resigned himself, okay, that I have lost Joseph, and now I've lost Simeon. All right, so he's willing to leave Simeon in jail, all right? Uh, but, 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 but he does it because he does not want to run the risk of losing Benjamin. If he loses Benjamin, then he loses everything that he has from Rachel, all right? And that's his youngest boy. You know, sometimes that baby, that, that, that baby child uh, gets, it, I mean, uh, gets it real good, uh, especially, especially sons, all right? That, that's, that, 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 that's his baby boy. And he didn't want anything to happen to his baby boy, okay? And so that's how 43, 42 ends, all right? So now, let's pick it up, and let's pick up, let's, let's make our way to our text for Sunday morning from where you left off on last week, uh, and pull out really just some uh, practical things that may help you uh, as a family, uh, may also help you to deal with different things uh, that may have happened with you in your family. Again, we're talking about family love, the struggles with love, and sometimes some of the, some of the most difficult uh, love relationships there are to navigate our, our relationships with our family, all right? So there are, there are a few things that we can pick up from 43 and 44 that makes our way to 45 in your Sunday school lesson that may be a blessing to you um, here as we provide you an overview, all right? I like providing these overviews because, again, it helps you to see some things that happens in the background because you just don't arrive at your text and, and you're just there. No, life happens in those chapters. All right. I know we have lessons, uh, but with the lessons we can pro pro provide life application our lessons. But also, uh, in some in some cases, you really want to get those in between chapters because it really helps you uh, to get a better feel uh, for uh, the lesson. All right. Uh, again, so we remember Joseph has already met, seen his brothers once, uh, and he had and that, he, he wept when he saw them. And he had to he had to get remove himself from the scene. Uh, he wept because he missed them. Uh, he, he wept. Probably out of some, somewhat out of joy that he that he thought he'd never see them again. Because remember, uh, he named his sons uh, names of Manasseh and Ephraim uh, that suggest uh, that 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 God had made him to forget his father, all right, or forget his father's household. Not forget in a bad way, but forget by way of it's now no, no longer hindering me. He's helped me to move forward in life in spite of that unfortunate incident. And then that Eph Ephraim. Uh, again, means fruitful in the land of my uh, trouble or the land of my distress, all right? Uh, so, um, and so again, so he sees him, he cries, and now, uh, again, he sets the stage for yet uh, what, will be, what will appear to be uh, another encounter where he will reveal himself, which is part of your Sunday school lesson. Three things we're going to look at tonight, all right? Number one, in chapter 43, um, we have what I will entitle a family dilemma. All right, because when 42 ends, Jacob has resigned, Benjamin is not going, which means y'all are not going back. Uh, you, there just won't be another return trip to Egypt, all right? Uh, and so he, he has resigned himself that I, I've, lost, I've lost Simeon, and so th th this is it. I, I'm not losing any more sons, okay? But then you get a family dilemma, all right? The family dilemma in chapter 43 is the fact that the famine gets so severe that they have to make a move, all right? They got to do something. That's the family dilemma. What are we going to do? Uh, how are we going to do it? And, you know, uh, how are we going to handle it, all right? And, and, and sometimes our families run into dilemmas as to how are we going to handle situations. This one seems to be a financial type situation. How do we handle this financial dilemma? How do we handle this dilemma to where we now need food, we've got money, uh, but we've got to be able to access the food, all right? And so, or the grain, all right? And the, the, the famine is severe. So let's pick up chapter 43, and let's start reading in verse number one, all right? 43, verse one. 
Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back and buy us a little food. But Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned her, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, Judah said to him, We will go down and buy you food. Yeah, you want food? This is how you can get it. If you, but if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel said, Why did you deal so wrongly with me as to tell the man whether you had still another brother? But they said, The man asked us pointedly about ourselves and our family, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? Or, and, and we told him according to these things. Could we possibly have known that he would say, Bring your brother down? Then Judah said to Israel, his father, send the lad with me, and we will arise and go that we may live and not die, both we and also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. From my hand you shall require him if I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. All right? For if we had not lingered, surely by now we would have returned to this second time, we would, have been, we, would have, we, we would have been able to make two trips by now, uh, Dad, if you hadn't delayed, all right? And then 11 through, four, 11 through 14 uh, uh, gives us uh, some, some things. We won't, won't read all that, but you can in your spare time. Go ahead and read uh, if you want to. Uh, the, the section deals this family dilemma. I have it covering sections, chapter 43, verses 1 through 14. So again, the family dilemma is, right, they need grain. Uh, but in order to get grain, they have to send, they have to take Benjamin back. Jacob is, 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 is adamant they're not going to take Benjamin, all right? Uh, Judah uh, speaks up with a brother and says, well, look, uh, there's one or two things. You, 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 you either send him uh, or we don't go. Uh, but also remember, Dad, it's not just about Benjamin or it's not just about you. It's about us. Our livelihood, our children, your grandchildren, is bigger than just you and, and the grief you may feel or the risk that it may put Benjamin at. It's bigger than that. It's all of us. So what I like about this family dilemma, we can take some things away from here. Number one, they dealt with this family dilemma by having an honest and healthy discussion. That's verses 1 through 10 that I just reviewed. They had a healthy and honest discussion, all right? One, one of the ways to handle family dilemmas is to be able to engage in healthy and honest conversations, all right? It seems as if even in the midst of this conversation, they lay out the facts, all right? They're honest about what they're feeling. J J Jacob is honest in the fact that he said, you know, Jacob is like, why in the world did you tell him that you had a brother? Why even put us in this predicament? So evidently, Jacob still has some lingering feelings as to how, the, how everything went down, right? And Judah was like, look, what were we supposed to do? Uh, the man accused us of being spies. And we, we had to tell him who we were. We, we had to let him know that we were all the sons of one man. All right? We're not multiple sons of a nation that's come. No, we're not a nation. We're just one small family. And so we're not spies. Uh, and so we, we're one man's sons. One son is no more. And we've got a youngest that's there with our father, all right? We had to tell them these things. So they, they got everything out in the open, all right? That's, what, that's one of the ways of handling family dilemmas is having honest and healthy discussions, being able to talk it out, all right? Being able to discuss it in a manner, in a way to where... Um, to where um, um, you can work some things out, okay? So that that's one of that's one of the little that's one of the things that we pick from, pick up from the stuff in the background, all right? Uh, again, we will see it play out in your lesson, all right? Uh, because that there is more healthy, honest discussion, all right? That's part of your that's part of your that's part of your lesson. So it's interesting to see how all this folds out. Healthy, honest, honest, healthy discussions uh, or, 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 or dialogues 
um, uh, helps to arrive at certain places to where love is able to prevail overall. All right. So with this family dilemma, one, one thing with this family dilemma is that they had an honest and healthy discussion. The second thing is, is that that healthy, honest discussion led to a difficult but wise decision. All right. Look at that. That's verses 11 uh, through 14. All right. Healthy, honest discussion led to a difficult but wise decision. All right. Uh, verses 11 through 14. And their father Israel said to them, if it must be so, then do this. I mean, I don't want to do this, but, but in order to save our lives, I know I've got to do this. All right. Uh, take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down a present for the man or some presents for the man. A little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, a pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and arise and go back to the man. And look at, listen to this. And may God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may release your other brother and Benjamin as well. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. Meaning, if I lose um, Benjamin and Simeon, I just lose them. All right? I, 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 it's just what it is. But, because, but, but, but look at what he does. He leaves it in God's hands. All right? And so uh, that, 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 that's part of the wise difficult but wise decision and so sometimes when you have difficult decisions uh, once you once you work it out and you make the decision you still got to leave it in the Lord's hands you still got to ask God to bless it you still ask God uh, to intervene and so so Jacob resigned to the fact that we, we, we it is what it is what we are right now and so may it happen as God allows it to happen all right and so that's how they that's how they dealt with their family dilemma uh, they had honest and healthy discussion, all right, and then which led them to make a difficult but wise decision, all right, and part of that was that they put it in the hands of God. Look at how, look at what he did though. A wise, it was difficult, but uh, I like I use the word wise because remember he's trying to ensure that Benjamin returns and Simeon. So one of the things he says is. Uh, take him some gifts, take him some presents, appease the man, all right? Do what you can, right? And look here, take, take, take double the money, which means take, um, you, 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 you can spend twice as much money as you would have, uh, as, as you would have spent. So take double the money, the Bible what you need, but also take back that money uh, that was in your, uh, in, in your bags. He says, because perhaps uh, something happened. It was oversight that they, they Maybe they forgot to take the money out of your bags when they took you to prison. I, I don't know. Maybe something happened. But at least show yourself to be honest men that are coming in a second, all right? Um, and, and so do that to ensure that all of you return back home. All right, so it gives us a way to help to deal with family dilemmas. So that, so, 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 so now they are prepared to return back to Egypt uh, so they can buy more grain, all right? And gain favor with the Lord so that they might uh, return back to Egypt or turn back uh, to Canaan, all right? Uh, re re return to Egypt, then return back to Canaan to their daddy with, 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 with all of his sons, all right? That he knows that they're still alive, all right? So that, that's our, uh, that is um, the setup initially to get us rolling inside of our uh, lesson, uh, inside of our, our, our context. So we've got a family dilemma. That leads to the next section, the next big section, which covers the rest of chapter 42. We're not going to read all of it. I just wanted to read those initial things because I want you to see the, the discussion that ensued or this, the discussion that took place, all right? Uh, I, we'll, we'll paraphrase most of everything else that happens uh, the rest of the way through, all right? So, again, um, this, 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 this leads them back heading uh, to Egypt, returning to Egypt uh, for the, uh, uh, to, to, to buy more grain, all right? That picks up with chapter 43, verses 15 through 34. And that section I've entitled, um, an, a, a Revealing Feast, all right? We have a revealing feast, 
All right? So the brothers returned back to Egypt. All right? In order, but it's been a delay now because jo Jacob was not going to send them. All right? Uh, was not going to send the sons back, send Benjamin back, but now they had to, uh, the, the famine forced the situation. All right? Uh, and that's how come we, 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 we don't cry over famines uh, as well because they could be a way of God forcing families back together. Isn't it interesting how this pandemic period uh, has forced us to spend more time with most of our families than we probably spent with them in some time? <laughs> Isn't it interesting how he's forced us? Uh, I know even of our family. I mean, uh, uh, we're, not, we, 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 we're physically apart, but uh, you, get, you got Sunday Zoom sessions, right? It's amazing how God can arrange uh, things uh, with pandemics, even famines, amen. So um, they returned back to Egypt, okay? That's, how, that's where verse 15 starts off, all right? In 15 through 34, uh, we have a revealing feast that takes place, all right? One thing this feast revealed, this feast revealed that Joseph's heart had truly been healed, all right? Uh, th th this revealing feast uh, reveals that Joseph's heart had truly been healed, all right? What happens is, is that when the brothers arrive, Joseph, notice they've arrived, and Joseph commands his household steward, prepare a feast, all right? Go slaughter an animal, so today at noon, they shall be my special guests. I, I'm, in, I, I, I'm inviting them to a feast at my house, all right? It kind of gives you it kind of gives you a picture of Jesus' parable uh, of, 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 of the prodigal son, the returning son, uh, that, 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 that asked his daddy for, that's his, daddy for his goods, went and blew his money as far away land, left, uh, squandered everything, found himself in want, made his way back to his daddy's house. When his daddy saw him, ran, ran, hugged him, and then said, kill the fatted calf. We're going to have a feast, all right? My son has returned. And so we have that same kind of dynamic where it looks like uh, that upon a return, a feast is set up. Uh, in order to uh, celebrate uh, the reunion uh, or, or to facilitate fellowship. That's what's happening uh, in our text. Although Joseph still does not yet reveal himself to him, his brothers, uh, but, but, it, but, but, but the, the fact that he opens his, the fact that he, um, the fact that he has them prepare a feast for them says something about uh, the condition of his heart, that God truly had healed his heart. I want to I, I pick back up on that from last week because remember, uh, Joseph named his sons, I've said it already, Manasseh and Ephraim, all right? Uh, he's made me to forget. Or he's helped me to move forward beyond the hurt. I've, I've, I've left that in the past. I've moved on. I'm now being productive in the land of my affliction. All is well. Um, his father made me, God made me forget all the toil of my father's house, all right? And there was language about, uh, I asked God to help me get over this thing. It was painful. It was distressful. And I was having problems moving on, but God helped me to move forward, and I've, I've done so. So God healed my heart. God helped me to, to deal with the hurt of my past. God helped me to deal with the hurt of their hate in such a way that he was able to kindly relate to them and show them compassion on last week's lesson. And then we'll see it play out even here in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the background leading up to your lesson today that he holds a feast for them, all right? He opens up his house to them, all right? Uh, that, that, that's major. He shows them hospitality. All right, uh, and 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 that's part of what that's part of what what, what happens with, with with this revealing um, feast. Uh, his his in, in his interaction with his brothers showed that he truly was had had, had, had a healed heart. All right, I like that because it 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 shows us that uh, one of the ways that we can test uh, whether our heart has healed after hurt uh, is our ability to still sit down and have fellowship, our ability to open ourselves up to the fellowship, open ourselves up to some things. So really, uh, it's symbolic with Joseph opening up his house. It was symbolic of Joseph reopening his heart. All right, because really he had, he had closed off some things with the naming of his sons. That, that was a significant thing. I've moved on. But this right here says, jo although Joseph had moved on from that hurt, God had healed him enough from the hurt 
that he was able to put himself in a position to reopen his heart or to rekindle a relationship or to be reconciled to him, brothers. His brothers, he opened himself up to reconciliation. And that's what God really wants to do anyway is to reconcile, is, is, to, is to bring back together. He doesn't want our families divided. He doesn't want us divided between one another. But we have to be able, but again, we have to allow him um, the, 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 the lead way in the room to heal our hearts. <coughs> Excuse me. So we see when Joseph opens up his house to them, it was symbolic of him opening up his heart or reopening his heart to them. His willingness to begin to put himself back in a position uh, to enter into a renewed relationship. Hmm. That sounds like that, 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 that sounds like what forgiveness is. That, that's what God does with forgiveness. All right. Uh, God, God, God doesn't catch eternal amnesia when he forgives us. Uh, so it's not like it slips his, 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 his divine memory banks. But what forgiveness really means is, is that he allows the relationship to resume. Or he allows the relationship to be rekindled or to continue on. So he, he opens it up for another chance, another opportunity. And that's what forgiveness does on our end. It, it helps us to open up an opportunity. It helps us to open up the possibility uh, of a renewed relationship or for the relationship to, re to be rekindled. That's what Joseph was doing. But I'm going to pick up from something in a minute. Because he enters into this. The thing that he's doing is, is interesting because it's going to show something in a minute. I want to pull it, I want to pull it, tease that out in a minute as well uh, to help us how to, uh, to somewhat, although we, we, we allow the opportunity, but we enter into it wisely. All right? And so we, we, we'll, see that, we, we, we'll see that play out. And that's part of really what's going on with some of these tests, and particularly the test that he's getting ready to set up. Okay? So one of the things that, that, that this that, that reveals in your background in the background leading up to your lesson is what allows your lesson to, to, to take place is the fact that God healed Joseph's hurt. All right, and God is still able to heal our hurts. All right, he's still able to do that if we allow him to do that and we and we, and we walk with him. Uh, God will mend broken. Hearts. Have I got a witness out there? Amen. And so that, that's, what, that's what happened. So this revealing feast revealed that Joseph's heart had been truly healed. All right? But it reveals something else. It re also reveals that Joseph's brothers had truly changed. Yeah, that's the other thing. It, re it revealed Joseph's heart had been healed, but it also revealed that Joseph's brothers had truly changed. All right? I say that because as part of this narrative, uh, we see the presence of honesty, all right? Because again, uh, once, jo once, once the brothers return uh, and Joseph sees his house, house steward to bring the brothers to his house, and so when Joseph got to his lunch break, he made his way home, amen? But in the meantime, uh, the brothers were saying, you know what, man, this is not good. We in trouble. The man bringing us to his house. Remember how harsh he spoke to us the last time? We in trouble. He's getting ready to do us in, make his case against us because of that money that was in our sacks. So what they did was uh, they didn't wait uh, to see how it was going to transpire. They approached upon arriving at the house. Um, it's almost like uh, before they entered into the house, they stopped at the door and said, hey, Mr. Household Steward, I, we, we need to talk with you. We, we, we're honest men. <laughs> if we, if we weren't honest men, so we need to tell you what happened. A, a, a crazy thing happened. We got back home, and unbeknownst to us, we started unpacking our bags. We found in our bags the money that we thought we had left here to buy the grain that we thought we had paid for. So this is what we've done. We brought that money back with us, <laughs> all right? So, 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 so they're like preempting the case of the things that's going to be uh, presented against them, okay? So they said, we brought that money back, and we brought double money back with us, and we're willing to pay double for whatever single ration we would, we would get. Uh, we're willing to pay double price for, for stuff to show you just how honest uh, we are, all right? So, 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 so they, and really the brother, the, some scholars suggest that one of the reasons why the brothers really wanted to return right away was is that they wanted to make sure that, 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 that at the time that Joseph uh, was convinced, would be convinced that they weren't spies. 
And so their integrity was on the line and not having returned, all right? So they wanted to do that. They get back. And so the first thing they do is they make, they make sure that they uh, make known what, what is going on, all right? So you see their honesty. But the real thing I want you to see is, is not just their honesty, but you are, the presence of their honesty as it plays, as the rest of the 43rd chapter plays out, we also see the absence of their jealousy. Amen. They had truly changed. All right. Now remember from Genesis chapter 37, all right, the favoritism that was shown to Joseph by Jacob was something that drove them crazy, drove, drove them mad. All right, and for some and for some siblings out there right now, you need to uh, the, the, you need you need, to, you need to get over some things. Amen. Even though they may have been a favorite, that that look, look Joseph, uh, 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 interesting is gonna play out here in a minute with Judah. They say something you just you just gotta accept it is what it is and, and move on. Uh, uh, that, 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 that there's more important things. Amen. Um, and so. Uh, we see, but we see again the brothers had gotten to their point. They had matured because again, Genesis thirty-seven, they hated their brother. But Genesis thirty-seven eleven says uh, that after Joseph shared with them their dreams, they envied as well as hated their brother. So the envy was jealousy. They were jealous that uh, that, that that he was having these dreams. They were jealous he was being shown this favor. They were jealous of the favor that appeared to be on their brother's life. All right. Now, when we get back to here, uh, and we see we, we see the jealousy was there. Um, when we, but in the lesson right now, you don't see any more jealousy. So part of what Joseph is doing in the text is not only is he uh, opening his heart, reopening up his heart, but but, but he's also testing. His brothers. And so even when we begin to reopen ourselves to relationships, uh, it, 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 the text, uh, the background encourages us uh, to do so uh, with wisdom. All right? Uh, to do so in such a way to where you can see uh, that you open yourself up to the relationship, uh, but, 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 but tread lightly and see how the relationship develops. All right? So that, 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 that's kind of what he's doing here. So with the feast now, uh, interesting happened with the feast, and, and, I, and I'm going to read it. Uh, I'm going to read it for you at the end of chapter 43, verse 33. They're at the feast. Benjamin's there. Simeon has been let out of prison. I'm sorry, Simeon. All the brothers are there. All twelve brothers are present at the feast, uh, but um, eleven of the brothers doesn't know who the twelfth man is, <laughs> or who the other, or who the other brother is. All right. Here it is, 43, verse 33, and they set. Before him, I mean, they, they sat across from 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 from, uh, from um, Joseph. All right, and the way and the way the race was set up is that because of the because of nuances, religious nuances, and social uh, dynamics with uh, Egyptians and Hebrews and whatever, they were not able to eat. They they they, they weren't able, they didn't sit in the same room per se. Uh, Joseph was at his private table. Uh, the Egyptians that was part of his household ate in another area, and Joseph's brother was like in another area but facing him. So they they were able to see each other. All right, and and, and even have uh, potential interaction with each other, but at, they were at a someone at, at at a distance. So, but, but, but watch this. It's, it's, it's interesting. Jo Joseph, jo Joseph plans this thing out real neatly. And they sat before him, I meaning the brother sat before Joseph, sat in front of Joseph, uh, it's across from Joseph at a distance. The firstborn according to his birth, birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked in, a, in astonishment at one another. Then he took servings to them from before him, or he had his servants do that. But Benjamin serving was five times as much as any of theirs. So they drank and ate, and they drank and were merry with him, or merry with Joseph, all right? And Benjamin, they all, so again, uh, a little nuance here. Joseph, when he sat them down, when he had them seated, because part of hospitality is, is that you sit your guests. So when Joseph had his brothers seated, he sat them in the order from oldest to youngest. So as they're sitting there, that's why they're looking at each other astounded, like, okay, um, what's going on? He sat us in the order of our age. And so they, they're like, uh, <laughs> and that, so, so Joseph is kind of, you know, 
<laughs> it, it get on a little bit, if you will. Um, but, and again, in verse 34, but then 34 is where, is where I really want to get to because there at 34, that's where, um, that, that's where he gives Benjamin five times more than the rest of them. And watch this. Nobody's mad. Everybody's happy. They eat, drink, and remember, they, they had a wonderful time uh, with each other, meaning nobody was jealous of Benjamin, all right, which means that somehow over the years, uh, they got over some stuff. They worked, they, God, God worked on them, amen, um, and so they no longer had jealousy in their heart. They no longer had envy if one had something more than the other. Uh, and I believe, that, I believe sometimes we would be better off as siblings or even in families if we weren't jealous of what the other one has. Amen. How God decides to bless one another, that's, that's God's business. That's how God does it. Amen. Just love on each other and just celebrate the fact that you got more than what you need, Benjamin. Dig in, bro. <laughs> Enjoy this feast. We are in the second of command's house in Egypt. I mean, <laughs> We, look, hey man, we're gonna we gonna enjoy this, all right? And you know, so that, that's what's going on here, all right? So with this this revealing feast, we see revealed the mere fact that uh, Joseph's heart had been truly healed, and we also see that Joseph's brothers had truly changed, all right? And so that, that's what we see taking place. And so now that's going to play into what's getting ready to happen next, which is what leads into your Sunday school lesson. So again, one thing we have in the background, we had a family dilemma that they, excuse me, that they handled by having open, honest, healthy discussion, which led to them making a difficult but wise decision. All right. Then from their family dilemma, that led to a revealing feast. All right, from Canaan to Egypt, a revealing feast. This revealing feast, it revealed that Joseph's heart had been truly healed, and it also revealed that his brothers had changed. Now, Joseph may not have been completely convinced. Uh, he knew they had changed, uh, but, 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 but what happens now seems to suggest uh, that he needed to be sure of some things, all right? So the last thing we want to look at uh, as, part, as a part of a background to your Sunday school lesson is the interest and interesting development. All right, that that that's chapter forty-four. Forty-four is your interesting development. All right, something happens in verses one through seven, the first half. All right, and the thing that happens there is Joseph's plan. All right, as part of this interest and development, Joseph had a plan. Let me paraphrase real quick. This is the plan Joseph had. Joseph told his household servants, "Said, look here." Uh, as the morning arrived, it was ready for them to return, make their return trip back to Canaan with their goods, their grains, rather. Uh, they went to their family. Uh, Joseph commands his servant, uh, go fill their bags, uh, like you did the last time. Give, give them everything they need. Give, give every man everything they need. Put their money back in their sack again. All right, we return all the money, put it back in the sack again. Uh, 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 and I'm sending them back with... with, with with the grain, but this time take my royal cup and put it in the bag of the youngest. Alright? Put it among the stuff of the youngest. Alright? Uh, and send them away. So that's what happened. They, be, they ride off. Alright? And before they were able to get out of Egypt, uh, the household servant was coming by Joseph. Go, 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 uh, go, 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 go catch them. Uh, have them empty out their goods. Uh, and, 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 tell, and, 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 and whoever, um, in, in fact, the goods because the king's cup has been stolen and he know you did it. All right. And so, um, uh, they catch up with him. The brother says, no, we, 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 we're honest men. We, 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 we gave you back all the money. Why would we return evil for good? All right. He, he treated us royally. We would not do that. That doesn't make any sense. So therefore they said, uh, whoever, um, Whoever has the cup, we're so convinced it's not among us. Whoever has the cup, may they be put to death, and we will become your slaves. We won't even go back to Canaan. We will stay here as your slaves, all right, if that is the case, all right? And so the servant said, I don't, uh, that, that's not necessary. Just whoever has it, uh, he will return um, back to be the, 
to be a slave of, of the Lord, and the rest of the brothers can go home free in peace to their father and all is well. And so they said, said, fine, cool, let's, let's do it. So he starts with the oldest, the servant starts with the oldest, unpacks the bags, no cup. Next to the oldest, no bag, uh, unpacks the bag, no cup, on down the line until he gets to the youngest brother. And there the cup is, and the brothers cannot believe it. Their hearts fall, all right? So one of the things we have here, we have Joseph's plan. His plan was a planned test. It was a planned test. Joseph wanted to test and see uh, to, the, to what extent had the brothers changed. He sees that there was no jealousy there, but he wants to know um, uh, how would they respond when their youngest brother is put in a precarious predicament. How they gonna, because however they respond to him, will respond in that situation, will let him know, number one, whether it's safe for him to open up his heart truthfully to them. All right? And also will, will say, say, let him know whether or not his youngest brother was in any kind of, in, in, in any kind of danger. So it's a planned test because he wanted to test their trust. Again, he wanted to test to see, can I trust myself can I trust my heart to you? Can I trust you with my heart? All right? I've healed. All right? I've healed. I want this new relationship, but I, I, I need to know. And your actions will let me know. And what I like about this is God will give us wisdom as to how to navigate uh, re, re, renegotiating um, reestablished relationships. Okay? So we just want to pray for God to heal our hearts. We also want to be mindful and wise enough to say, God, show me how to enter into this relationship. Show me the steps that I need to take. Help me out, God, that I can, that I can make sure that, 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 that things are going to be, uh, that I'm handling things the right way. Okay? So Joseph is putting them to a test. So that was Joseph's plan. All right? He wanted to see whether, to, to, to the degree, the extent that his brothers had changed. Okay? Ha, ha, can, can, can my heart be trusted in your hands, okay? Um, I've, I've gone through a lot to get here, uh, and, I, and, I, and, and, and I need to make sure uh, that, that, that you're ready, that you're ready to, 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 to walk into this newness of, of, a, of, of a rekindled relationship. Are you ready for, are you truly ready for this reconciliation? Joseph's plan led to Judah's plea. All right, that's where we're kind of going to end it up at, which is verses 18 through 34. Uh, when you get a chance, I would encourage you to read that passage because it, 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 it is a powerful uh, pa pa passage, all right? Uh, Judah um, uh, enters a plea with Joseph, okay? Joseph says, I'm keeping the boy as my slave. Y'all go back home in peace. Um, paraphrasing it real quick, Judah says, uh, J Judah says, hey, Joseph, uh, Lord, um, you're like, to us, you're like Pharaoh. <laughs> I mean, I know, you're, I, know, I, know, I know you're second in command to him, but to us, you're just like Pharaoh. I mean, you got just as much clout as he does. So, uh, so, we, we, so we, 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 you know, let us um, do me the favor. Uh, uh, let me have a conversation with you. Uh, I, I need to explain some things to you. I, I need to let you know um, uh, why uh, what you're proposing to do, why, why, why I, I can't let this ride. I, 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 I can't let it ride. I, I, I've, got, I, I've, I've got to do something. So uh, with, with, this, with, with, with this plea, uh, he makes what I call an impassioned plea. All right? He, 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 is, he makes an emotional plea. And in this plea, he explains to Joseph um, uh, that, 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 that Benjamin, uh, what he means to his daddy, all right? And what will happen to his daddy if, if Benjamin does not return back home. He said, you don't understand. If, 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 if Benjamin does not return home, my daddy will surely die of grief. Uh, and, 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 and I do not want my daddy to go out like that. So, 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 so he says, uh, please, basically, uh, don't, 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 don't do my daddy this way. Uh, whatever you do, let 
Benjamin returned back home, all right? Uh, and he said, that, 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 that's, what, that's what I'm begging for you uh, to do. But what I like about his impassive, because he said, he said this is the son, this, this is, this is, this is, these are the two sons of his wife. Now, what's interesting is, is that in that language, remember, J J J Jacob had four wives, right? The two sisters, right? And then their two, um, their two maid servants, okay? Uh, but he said, but he realized there was something special about the relationship that he had with Rachel, which made why those boys, Benjamin and Joseph, were so special to him. And so by this time, Judah has come to that realization. He has matured in his life, and he's come to discover, I'm all right with that. that that's just my daddy. That, 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 that's just how it is, all right? And what I love about this speech is, is that nowhere in this speech he acknowledges the favoritism that his dad has for Benjamin, but he doesn't judge his daddy for it. He has risen above it, all right? Uh, and sometimes some, some people just the way they're going to be, uh, but just because of the way they're going to be doesn't mean that that, that, that that has to remain the way that we have to be. God can work on us to make the necessary adjustments and levels of maturity that we're able to work enough to where love can prevail even over family flaws. So Joseph makes this impassioned plea, and in this impassioned plea, he accepts his daddy for who his, who his daddy is and how his daddy feels. It's cool. So whatever you do, I don't want my daddy to suffer, so please sin. Benjamin back with my brothers. He says, so this is what I suggest. My suggestion is, is that uh, uh, I want you to take me instead. I will become your slave from here on out. Send Benjamin, take me. All right. So his, his impassioned plea became an impactful plea because that is the plea that finally broke Joseph down in verse in chapter 45, which is your Sunday school lesson. Now, what I love about his plea was is that look at here. You can tell the transformation that, that took place because in his plea, he was unwilling to return without his father's youngest son. All right. His thing was, I'm not going back to Canaan without my daddy's youngest son. And therefore, his, his unwillingness to do that showed his willingness to become what he had done. You remember what he did in Genesis 37. You get time to read it back. When the Israelite traders had thrown Joseph, stripped him of his garment, thrown him in the pit, and those Israelite traders came by, it was Judah who spoke up and said, this here, let us, let, 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 it does not profit us nothing to leave the boy in the pit. Now, let's not leave him in the pit to die. Uh, let's pull him out the pit and sell him uh, uh, to the Israelite slaves, um, traders. Uh, so they sold him into slavery. Look at what has transpired here. He is so unwilling to let his, his daddy go out like that or let his brother remain as a slave that he now says, I will become a slave. I will become what I did to my brother. That shows the magnitude of the brother's growth and development. Judah becomes kind of like a, a symbol of his brothers. Uh, and and, and that, that grabbed Joseph. Joseph says, I know everything is fine now. I, I know it's fine. I know they, re they, they regretted what they did. They're truly sorry. Amen. And I know we've, I've been talking to, I've been talking about how to help, family, help, help, help families work through things, uh, how we have to be mature enough to overlook some things. But let me throw this in for free as well. This, your, your lesson transpires um, uh, Saturday for, for your study. It transpires because the brothers truly have made a change. All right? We, we must be willing to forgive. All right? At the same token, those of us who have done wrong to other people, we've got to be mature enough to admit the wrong in order for the relationships to, be, to, to, to develop and grow. All right? Notice God does forgive us. All right? But he also requires repentance from us, all right? And so it works the same in our family relationships. God bless you. God keep you. I'm out of time. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, the overview. Hope you enjoyed it on Saturday. If you're not part of our membership and you're doing your study on Sunday, hope you enjoyed it on Sunday. Again, love prevails over all. Amen. Have a blessed rest of the week. I love you, and God loves you too.